Michigan State hockey, yes, their season came to an end in probably as bitter of a fashion as possible. But we're going to look at some of the sweet stuff. And also Tom Izzo was on a little podcast called Pardon My Take. We're going to take some snippets out of there, talk about it with the one, the only chief of propaganda. Let's go. You are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Spartan friends, Spartan family, Locked On Spartans listeners, thank you all uh, so much for kicking off your week with us here at Locked On Spartans, your team in green white five days a week. Please rate, review, subscribe, do whatever makes you happy. Because well, here we are again in East Lansing. We, we could use a smile. So if it's going to make you happy, just go for it. Just do it. Uh, hopefully, this guest that is joining the show today. We'll put a smile on your face. Lord knows he's put many a smile on my face. It is the MSU chief of propaganda. Chief, what's up, man? How we doing? We doing okay over there? Yeah, honestly, all things considered, I'm, I'm beaming ear to ear. I think that we got a lot of fun stuff to talk about tonight, and we'll obviously put uh, some of the more recent events into perspective here. But uh, I, I think that fans can take a deep breath and – we're going to kind of walk them through what to what we're going to experience over the next few days, weeks, months here leading into uh, sports again. MSU chief of propaganda, never on schedule, but always on time. We need that energy right now because let, let's get into the mix. We don't start a lot of shows here with hockey, but dang it. When there's a spot in the frozen four between two hated rivals. Um, yeah. It's Michigan state versus Michigan. We're going to kick off the show for better or for worse talking about this game. And you know, by now it, it did not go the Spartans way. What I'm not going to do here is do the whole, Hey, we won the series of the season four to two over Michigan. Ha ha. Or I'm not going to cry about the selection committee or where we were seated and the barn that the game was played in. I look, Michigan had to play the same sheet of ice. They won this game. But what I will do before having an existential crisis here in a few minutes is lament about Michigan State hockey season. Adam Nightingale, second year, he's got this thing turned around. And no, this isn't a collection of seniors, you know, guys that are just going to have one shot at Michigan State, that it's a flash in the pan, they're going to make a count, and then, hey, we'll see if this can continue from here on out. No, this was a very young team here in East Lansing. What he has done this quickly in his tenure with the young core I think it's safe to say that even after this Big Ten championship year, Big Ten tournament championship year, there is a lot to smile about despite this incredibly bittersweet end to the season here. Look, I know it's never fun losing to the guys down the road. I'm not thrilled. But I think when the dust settles, it can be more sweet than it is bitter to see what Adam Nightingale and the crew have done here in East Lansing that quick. So that's my take on it. Sucks losing 5-2. Sucks seeing the other team go to the Frozen Four, but damn it. That's a lot of good signs here for this hockey program. Not just that, hey, things are on the rise. They're on the rise quickly, though, Chief of Propaganda. You got a similar takeaway from this game, or where are you at with this whole hockey program? No, without a doubt, and I think it's a testament that you, we're opening up this 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 program talking about MSU hockey and this situation yeah. again. I mean, we haven't been to a Frozen Four since 2007. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't won a tournament game since 2007. So to be even in a position where you're competing to play in the Frozen Four, and listen, Losing to your losing this game sucks to any team. Losing it yeah. to your bitter rival, it, it, it's the worst. Um, one thing I will note is the fact that Michigan they're going to their third straight Frozen Four. This is a very veteran led gotcha. yeah. team. They are, I mean, they're experienced and like you just mentioned, we have the youngest or one of the youngest rosters in the entire sport. So, right. I mean, to make that sort of astronomical jump, it's tough to begin with. But to go against these other teams who have so much experience, it and it, it just makes it a little bit more difficult. But um, yeah, to your point, having this young team, we're getting, I mean, an even bigger influx of talent coming in next season. Uh, the future is bright. Obviously, like there's no sugarcoating what happened tonight. It sucks. We yeah. honestly we were the better team for about 40 minutes there, maybe even 45. Um, Michigan, they just yeah. they they found a way, and that's what veteran-led teams do. It's it, it's just tough. 
MSU took the one zero lead in the first period and I almost got my car drove down to Maryland Heights to pull any plug in the arena I could just to get a blackout <laughs> going just stop the count <laughs> says stop it <laughs> but um no unfortunately they, they do play all three periods uh, in, in these games and that uh that's that's a bummer that's a big bummer and speaking of bummer uh, just just let, let me get some things off my chest right now MSU chief of propaganda and I'm gonna try to find an odd silver lining at the end of all this but Look, I, I get it. It's hockey. It's not one of the main sports. It's not football. It's not basketball. But uh, this loss kind of feels like the cherry on top of uh, quite the year in sports. I think a lot of Michigan State fans can agree with me here. Back-to-back, bowl gameless seasons. And this was a season where by the time the first month was even over, you already had your coach take a very unceremonious exit from the cro- program for calling a sexual assault advocate was pretty bad and then of course you lose the football game and uh to the team down the road 49-0 and honestly at that point we knew what was going to happen that game nice little addition though for that game though we had to apologize for a Hitler shout out before the game so this football season completely and utterly off the rails but (laughs) at least basketball is here to save us top five team coming off the sweet 16 and then Oh, great. We limp to the finish line here. We have a good game in the first round, but then we get lambasted against North Carolina team that honestly, not not all that great as a one seed. So that was a great basketball season. But by golly gee, Willikers, those icy Spartans over there that are playing great hockey. Oh, my God, they're winning banners. They've won two banners. At least we can put our happiness into these guys. Who cares if you only watched hockey for a week before this year? Dang it. Those boys at Green and White are cooking up something good. And my God. It's the worst team you possibly could have lost to in the NCAA tournament. So if you want to take it outside MSU too, I know there's a lot of Lions fans out there. We also just saw a 17-point lead in the second half taken away from us as San Francisco goes to the Super Bowl. If you really want to get outside sports altogether too, as far as Detroit sports, I'm a huge golf guy. Hell, man, with the PGA and the Live just being too big, bickering uh, hens at one another and just ruining that sport. I can't even enjoy anything anymore. So here's a silver line. I'm going to try to find here, chief. All right. This, this, that was a lot of sadness. I just threw at you guys. It it's over guys. Like this is as bad probably as it is ever going to get here for Michigan state fans. If you want to broaden that and be Detroit slash Michigan state sports fans, this is as bad as it's going to get. Pretty soon we could all flip this page. Better days are ahead. I like Jonathan Smith captaining this football program. I think that Michigan State is due for a decent offseason for basketball. But nevertheless, let's say that none of it happens. This is still as bad of a year as it could be because you add in the Michigan National Championship for football. And oh, by the way, Purdue, with the way everything's been going lately, they'll probably win the national title on Monday too. So um, I know that that was a lot of sadness I just threw down. But guys, we're going to survive. We're all going to live to see another day, and we're going to do it together. My thesis is just better days ahead. Chief, I'm trying to fire up the troops here. I'm just trying to talk myself into happiness. You got anything else on top of all that, man? Because this has been a hell of a six-month stretch. Yeah, I actually do have a couple things. Well, Thank the Pistons you. Set, the Pistons set the record for the most consecutive losses. Yeah. The Red Wings are going from the top wildcard spot to putting a garbage company on their historic uniforms and not winning a game for about three weeks. And well, and then one more thing, Sheehan. You mentioned yeah, the, the Hitler thing on the on the scoreboard. Where was he born? That was a trivia question. Where was Austria. where was Hitler born? Austria. Yep, you got it. See. Yeah. There's a, there's a silver lining. Here. Got that going for me. At least I'm good at my trivia. <laughs> really good at trivia. Yeah, the, the Jeopardy thing pays off. But no, like, <sighs> listen, rock bottom has been reached about three or four times, and you just outlined all of them. And I mean, from from here, it, it, there's nothing that can happen that can get worse. Like, I know we're, we're in a chat together, and we were joking about something the other day, like, Listen, we, we've dealt with all this stuff. Nothing can phase us. Like anything in the yeah. world that happens, just it, yeah. it's like, okay, <laughs> what's next here? But yeah. no, I'm, I am, with all that said, I am very optimistic about the direction of where our programs are headed, just based off of sort of the, the things that have been happening behind the scenes, as well as uh, an influx of uh, positivity coming in in terms of NIL, recruiting, and just kind of adults in the room. Amen. 
here this 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 is why the people need you chief i love you the listeners love you, the viewers love you because yeah th- this is this has been awful i thought watching aj holger get blocked for his fifth layup attempt against uh north carolina was a straw that broke my back but as me this this old cranky Campbell was starting to get off the mat a, a single a single straw of hay blew over from the next town and just brought me back down to my knees with this hockey loss. But we're going to talk Michigan State basketball here in a hot second. But first, I need to talk everyone's ears off about the Game Time app, folks. This is the greatest ticketing app out there. Let's say you're going to be like me and you're going to try to get down to Comerica Park a few times this summer to watch those Motor City Kitties. By the way, 3-0. and Certainly that's not going to fizzle out this summer with the way things are going. Anyway, let's say you want to go down to Comerica Park. Game time is the best app to get in on the action. They got flash deals throughout the week. And hey, let's say that. Oh my God, out of nowhere. You know what? My schedule has cleared tonight. I want to go to the game. Last minute ticket deals on game time are second to none. So whether you like to plan ahead or you're a procrastinator like myself, game time is here to save you all sorts of cash. And they want to save you money right from the jump too, guys. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on college for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again, create an account and redeem code locked on college. That's all one word locked on college for $20 off again, guys, Detroit Tigers open. Opening day at home coming up this Friday. They're already pretty expensive. Game time, locked on college for the promo code. Download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Now let's drag the one, the only Odell Bretham. MSU chief of propaganda back into the mix here. We're going to try to pick spirits up because we'll start the segment with this. Joe Tipton. That's right. If on three, we talked about Javon Hadley last week how Iowa State seems to be the front runner in this race. But Joe Tipton drops that this portal wing player out of Colorado, he's going to have Zoom calls with Iowa State. You can probably know where the next part's going. He's also going to have Zoom calls with Michigan State. Those two programs, chief of propaganda, that's some good news. Let's elaborate on that. Michigan State, according to Joe Tipton, 50-50 shot here. Okay. Smiles coming back to Michigan State here for basketball, perhaps, maybe? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, one thing that's important to note about sort of that 50-50 barometer is the fact that leading into really that update from Tipton within the last hour as we're recording here, it was, right. I mean, it was a heavy lean to Iowa State. It was almost to the point where, I mean, we we weren't even mentioned. It wasn't going to even be a, somewhat of a possibility for us to uh, get on a Zoom call, let alone land them. And yeah. it seems like the timeline's really going to speed up here as – the dead period starts on Thursday. So if we have the Zoom call Monday, Tuesday here, uh, one of those schools is going to get a visit. So um, I think it's it, it speaks to sort of the urgency that the Michigan State staff and Tom Izzo is working with to revamp this roster, that they're going from a team that was out of consideration to one that uh, could potentially land this kid uh, before the dead period starts. And, um, yeah, I think that's very exciting. And uh, I got to give a shout-out to our guy, B-Flow. He was joking – earlier uh and mentioned how he saw like Izzo saw <laughs> uh, Matt Painter make a final four today and decided like enough is enough like it's it's go time calls were made right exactly yeah, right yeah calls were made <laughs> I'm glad you brought up that dead period because yes that is Thursday and it seems like Javon Haley wants to get this done quick go on to the next chapter but yeah if you missed the show we kind of blew him out a little uh bit ago when this was announced that Michigan State has actually reached out to him but He's a big wing. He's really good in transition. He's a great passer. He also finishes at the rim at a very, very good clip. So this is what you want when you dive into the transfer portal. It's the things that you get with a guy that's going to go into his fourth year. The refined things that you learn by playing basketball for three or four years, like we just said, passing, cutting off the ball is another great one. Just physicality in transition. So look, what that could do for Michigan State's lineup would be fantastic. It could move Jaden Akins all but full time to that two position. Sure, there'll be times where he plays the three every once in a while, but he could start at the two. And also, you could slide Cohen Carr down to the four because I don't really think he fits in at the three offensively or defensively. But nevertheless, it is a priority that they want a big wing. So Michigan State, they're either going to get the gold medal here with Javon Hadley or it seems like this, this could be another silver medal performance. But, hey, better to be on those Zoom calls than to not. So, yes, that's where things stand right now with the transfer portal and Tom Izzo. Speaking of Mr. Izzo, he was on a little podcast known, uh, it's, it's kind of underground. You guys definitely have not heard of this one. It's called Pardon My Take. 
For those of you that don't know, that's Draped in Sarcasm. They're the number one sports podcast out there. So he joined for an hour-long chat. Very fascinated to learn this on Thursday night as Big Cat, one of the co-hosts, teased it because they, they have a unique interview style. They are really laid back. They like to bust the balls, for lack of a better term, of their guests. So how is this going to do in that hot seat, so to speak? He did fantastic. This happens with a lot of guests. They leave as very likable characters, just like Izzo did. But what was your number one takeaway from the Tom Izzo interview? Because we're not going to go through you know, everything they talked about, but we'll just pick out some things that he spoke about because, again, this is like one of the biggest media companies that he could be speaking with right now. What was your biggest takeaway, uh, Chief? Yeah, so I have a tie for one. The first okay. one is that the suit thing is dead. So that that th that can all stop now. Um, Jeez. It was it was fun for about six minutes. And don't um, get me started. Yeah. Don't so, get me started. So, so, so that's another thing you can add to your list of MSU sports uh, disasters this year is that whole dialogue. But we're not going to dwell on that. I think no, we might. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing for me that really stood out the most was his comments in regards to the transfer portal. And listen, yeah. he, he's had very similar statements in prior years. But one thing that really struck me from this one is the fact he, he mentioned, like, listen, I, I don't I don't want to use it. I don't think it's necessarily a good thing for the sport of uh, college basketball or even sports in general is the transfer portal. But he, he used the term one in Rome. And listen, yeah. we just talked about Hadley. And listen, we're – Tom Izzo's in Rome right now. He's he's looking at the Coliseum, and he's like, okay, I, it, it's time to play ball. And um, the fact that he's finally putting that yeah, – you could tell earlier in the season with some of his comments in terms of what he needs to do, he, he saw the light. Um, and that that's really what stood out to me. And the fact that um, he's acting upon it now is what leads me to that being really the standalone piece. He really played the hits here, especially with the transfer portal. And he's talked about it time and time again. But everyone's takeaway is always just the quick headline of like, oh, Izzo hates the portal. Let's like hear why, though. I, I know it's asking a lot. Believe me, hey, I have a, a short attention span many a times. But like it, it, it probably is nice to know the context. It's not just a grumpy guy saying, oh, things are changing too fast. I don't like it. Like, no, what, what he brings up is a very legitimate reason. And there's two things that I want to bring up. One is just the sense of family, the sense of home, something that Michigan State and Tom Izzo have really ingrained in Michigan State and what sets them to be different than the rest of the programs. Like he brought up an example, like let's say you go to three schools in four years. Are you really finding a sense of home? Can you really go back to a coach and say, all right, this is my family that I can come back to every off season, Or if I have any troubles, like this is where I go. Probably not. I'm sure it does happen, but far too often it probably won't. And speaking of far too often, here's the second thing that he talked about that is incredibly important. It's that 1% of basketball players are going to go pro. I think he actually grew it up to like 2 or 3% if he talked about Europe or Asia, just professional basketball. But upwards of 95% of these guys are never going to play basketball again after college. You throw transferring into the mix, sometimes these, these credits don't transfer over, or sometimes there is a percentage. I think it's almost upwards of 18 or 20% of players that enter the transfer portal never find another home. They're not graduating on scholarship. Like th This is not just Izzo screaming at a cloud because he wants to. Like I, I know, guys, it's crazy. Whether the haters want to believe it or not, he actually does care. About kids, I, I know that's it's hard to believe for some people that just ardently hate Izzo, but he does care about the well-being of some players and student athletes here, and you that is a pitfall that comes with the transfer portal and how quick kids are to jump into it. Because look, it happens. Like there are kids that jump in way too quick. Is there a spot for it? One hundred percent, there is. Every story is different, but of the two thousand, yeah, you're gonna find yourself more than a handful of stories of kids that, well. That was a mistake, leaving my full ride scholarship to try to find greener grass and it never came, or now I can't have credits that transfer over. So those are the two points in his long – if you think I just went on for a while there, he went on for even longer and part of my take. So I just want to just hammer that point home of why Izzo always comes in the headlines of hating the portal. It's kind of for legitimate reasons, I think. I don't think I'm too far off base or being too much of a homer by saying that, in my opinion. I don't know. That's no, Sheehan, I, th I think that's that's a great statement. And even Izzo, I mean, he's spot on. It's Sometimes he's he's not the best with wording things and what his exact meaning is. But, I mean, listen, for every Dalton Connect, Grant Nelson, you're going to yeah. have 
whatever happened in Arkansas, you're going to have uh, you. <laughs> the two or three kids who transferred to Michigan. And yeah. that that's never going to get talked about. Look, look, we can even look at Michigan State football. For every Kenneth Walker, there's about 20 other guys who come here. They either kick off the team or it, it just a unmitigated it work. disaster. Yeah, I mean, it's right. and the thing with Michigan State, it's a very unique situation, like you mentioned with the family situation. It's like, okay, Tom Izzo has built this culture of not only family, but it's it goes almost far beyond that to the yeah. point where, I mean, you see the guys who, I mean, you look at Matt Ishbia. He in, I mean, he he owns an NBA team now. He flies people out to go see games Dude, okay. and help them out. Yeah. He hires players. <laughs> he helps them achieve their goals. You look, I mean, I could go on for hours about yeah. uh, the different players he's had and their impacts on uh, not even fellow Spartan basketball players, but Spartans in general. And uh, that none of that's possible without Tom Izzo's philosophy on culture, family, and kind of teamwork. Amen. Here, here. I, I want to get to one more point that I heard from uh, the part of my take interview, but first I need to talk all your ears off about Amazon Fire TV. Folks, Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. So whether it's opening weekend of baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have Fire TV point blank, period. Now, Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences too. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the in-game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date with all the latest in the world of sports. We're talking March Madness, NBA, MLB, and tons more, not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos too. So what are you waiting for? Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should trust me on this one. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. Now, Chief, there is one other quote that he had from this one. And again, this is an old school quote. This comes off as very uh, just old man just screaming about society because he called out society. And I don't think he's necessarily too far off base. Quote, it's hard to make teams tougher because our society is so soft. Now, that came off the heels of them talking about the old school war drill, the old fashioned put on the football helmet and the pads and go get some rebounds and just the physicality leaving the game of basketball. But he did say that there are some programs that have coming back to their DNA. But again, that was just one quote that's out there. It's hard to make teams tougher because our society is so soft. Agree or disagree with our Hall of Fame head coach there, Chief of Propaganda? A million percent agree. And I, I don't even, I mean, I'm sure it applies to society. I just, I, I, it's hard because I, I live in my own my own bubble in terms of how I yeah. interact with people and how I see things and what I experience in day-to-day -day life. But w when I'm looking just at the Michigan State program, he, he's right. I mean, y you saw quotes from guys on the team this year that they were, telling coach Izzo, like, oh, we have to do things this way now, and Izzo even acknowledge it, like, yeah, I have, to, I have to coach these this team differently than I have in the past, and to me, that's an issue, because Tom Izzo is one of the, what, three, four, five best coaches in the history of the sport, and he, he didn't get there by coddling kids and making mm, them no. feel like uh, <laughs> flowers are growing in the middle of winter. It's, yeah. listen, it, it's tough love. It's, I, I need to get the best out of you. I want to get the best out of you, and I know how to get the best out of you, and he had his ways to do that, and one is the war drill, and um, the fact that he feels the need to come out and say, like, things have gotten a little too soft. I think it's both uh, – he, he's pointing the fingers at himself saying, I've let this happen, and uh, listen, I, I think you can look at UConn and what they're experiencing right now. If uh, 60 Minutes did a really good piece on Danny Hurley recently, and I was kind of built that program up and some of the yeah. things they go through, and listen, it's not like – they're training for SEAL Team 6 to go kill Bin Laden, but they're, they're going through this rigorous training of uh, looking at what past players did to get to the levels that they're at now and how to continue on this path that they're on of having probably the, the greatest two-year stretch of college basketball, basketball yeah. performance we've seen. And, uh, I mean, it, this dwarfs whatever Florida did, but that's a, another conversation we can have. But, no, sure. ultimately, I, I agree, and I think that he's kind of – when he, when he makes those comments, he's talking about himself. He's let this sort of mentality yeah. take over the program, and I, I don't think that's going to be the case moving forward. 
I hope not. I, I hope there's a DNA change within the program. And look, I'm not asking for guys to just blindside tackle each other at practice every day, you know. But I, I think that there is a happy medium here where we can get some toughness back in the program. I mean, again, Izzo said himself, there are some programs that you see that coming back to. Houston is always the example, like especially us Michigan State fans use because, God, those Houston teams just remind you of those mid-2000s teams, like those early 2010s teams, just tough, run up and down, and we're just going to beat the hell out of you during 40 minutes of basketball. But uh, we'll see how fast they can get back to that if they ever return to that. But I do want to keep the end of this episode here, just on the NCAA tournament, because – Chief, I for, I for the life of me can't figure out if this is a minority or a majority opinion, but I, I don't care to root for a conference. I don't want to see Purdue succeed. I'm not seeing them cut down the nets in Detroit being like, uh, you know what, good good for them. Good for the Big Ten. This is really fun. Like, No, if I'm not smiling, I don't want any person in the Midwest to be smiling. Is that incredibly selfish of me? Yeah, you bet it is. But, like, no, I don't want to see other teams smile. I don't care how good this makes the Big Ten. And, oh, it makes the conference more desirable. Screw that. I, do, I mean, are you going to fade me on this one? Or do you agree? Because I, I, for life, me can't figure out, like, if this is the majority or the minority opinion here. You're not taking it far enough. I, actually, okay. when, um, <laughs> when I, I was in Rochester, downtown Rochester, for a bar night uh, mm -hmm. when NC State and Oakland were playing. I was the only person in that entire city cheering for NC State. Like, I mean, it was – man, my, my life was probably threatened at some point. But <laughs> listen, and people – Brett, like, like, what the hell are you doing rooting for NC State? I, I, I told him flat out, and, like, that was right after seeing us get <laughs> bombed against North Carolina. And I flat out told everybody, family members included, <laughs> if I'm miserable, you're miserable. Yeah. Like, that, <laughs> that's it. And listen, I'm going to do the same thing with Purdue. I, I'll wear red all next week, and if somehow Purdue advances yeah. to the championship, I'll either be wearing some crimson or I'll be wearing uh, UConn. So, no, if I, I don't feel any allegiance to rooting for a conference. I mean, there's 100 teams in the conference now, so, I mean, at some right. point you're just the ultimate yeah. bandwagon fan, and no, no. I hope Purdue loses uh, every single game I see them play. That, that applies for every Big Ten team, every – yeah. Uh, professional team that's not Detroit, so that's that's not just a Purdue thing. Look, maybe maybe, maybe we're just miserable people, and that, that could very okay well be that. the case. But uh, we have good Can reason to be a, a little miserable uh, lately. I'd say I don't know. <laughs> that's just not 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 to you know rehash everything that happened the last few months. But yeah, man, I look, I get it. UConn's an old bet. They're played out. They're hateable. Like they they are very arrogant, but like they, they kind of back it up. And I don't mind when a team backs up their extreme arrogance. But my God, like I, I need Dan Hurley to take care of business Saturday and then Monday in that order uh, against Alabama. It's, it's no slight against Alabama. I just need to see UConn play against Purdue because that's the best shot of not seeing just them do. I, I This is what a miserable year, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, this <sighs> might be worse than what happened in January. And like, like <laughs> that, that was pretty bad. But at least you saw that coming for a couple of years there. Like, okay, like, yeah. at some point it just felt inevitable. This, no, yeah. we, this we cannot have. At least January, you know, like us again, I'm pulling in the, the Detroit Spartans here. Like at least we had the Lions to, you know, kind of take our attention away from it. And, hey, this is fun. The whole state could root for this team here. Like, no, like th this time it's just like, uh, all right, we, <laughs> go, go Tigers. We got about four months before the game's really relevant, but I guess I could just sink all my hopes into this. It's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying really hard, man. I am, but like this is just a miserable stretch we're on. Oh my god! This, and look, by all accounts, UConn should have no problem buzzsawing their way to a national title. But it's just what well, we've seen the last few months. How am I supposed to believe that things ever get better, Odell? How am I supposed to believe that anything gets? <laughs> yeah, we just need. It, it, it's funny. Like that's been kind of a conversation I've had with some people. It's like we just need one thing to go our way and just get the momentum rolling. It's been so long. Like I was talking to people today about the, the hockey game and the importance and meaning of that. And you win that game. It, I mean, it, it flips the entire script of where kind of Michigan state sports are at. But once again, we came up short and now it's like, okay, how, how do we get back to that level and win that game next year? And I mean, there, there's so much work to be done. Like, a full year. Like it's not, 
we can't get right. to work tomorrow. It's um, and I'm, t- I'm talking like I'm involved in the team. I know, right? Isn't that fun? <laughs> I just sit Isn't there that and fun? Watch games. <laughs> When we get back in the lab, when we get back in the weight room, and like Lord knows, I ain't touching a weight the next 365 <laughs> days. Like, no, it's 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 these young kids that we put all of our very healthy emotion into uh, that's actually doing the hard work here, and we're just here to just get really mopey when things don't uh, go the way we wanted to. Isn't sports fandom just great, man? Yeah, and it'd be like, listen, I I do have one more one last question for you, and I, yeah. I kind of raised this on on Twitter X, whatever whatever you want to call. It. I don't even know anymore. Sure. Like, is if if Michigan State put out some sort of fund for the basketball portal, how much money do you think we would raise within seventy two hours? God, I'm, I'm not good at math, but it'd, it'd be it'd be enough to make a dent. Yeah, it'd be enough to make a dent. It'd be enough to to put us on more than just one Zoom call with one transfer. I think. I don't think that's right. overstepping. I don't. I don't think I'm going over the line with that that quote. But yeah. Yeah, that, that's sort of the frustrating thing for me. It's like, okay, we need to use the portal. We hear about this school's going to drop a bag. That school's going to drop a bag. Why Why don't we just drop, like, no, why don't we don't need to drop a bag. Why don't we just drive up with a Brinks truck, get the kid and his family come in. Yeah. Like, you're, you're coming to Michigan State. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I'm going to no, no, I, I, no, I, I get the whole thing. I get the whole dynamic. Yeah, and so yeah, I'll, I'll keep this short. I, I, I get the whole locker room dynamic because, like, you don't want a transfer coming in and making way more than the rest of the players, and that gets out very quickly. And then it's the whole weird dynamic in the locker room. But like that, that is an issue with colleges because, like, I talk about this all the time. This goes beyond college sports. In many walks of life, your best shot at a raise is by jumping companies. Like they've made it so attractive for people to enter the transfer portal that well that's how they get their biggest paydays and then that drives up the price for them and they're making more than anyone else in the locker room and again this this is another 10 minute segment but uh we just don't have time for um but anyway so i do understand why Izzo is being a little methodical with this because you can't just go out there just throw in a million dollar bag when the guys back home aren't even making that money so what whatever again i'm rambling i said i'd keep that short that was not short (laughs) I'm really good at that. Uh, so sorry about that, Chief. But uh, so, yeah, so man. I. I can go on for like five hours talking about this stuff. I'll be you up at 3 a.m. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do at a wedding is whenever the bridesmaid or the best man stands up and says, all right, I'm going to keep this short. You know you're in for the longest speech of your entire life. And like the, the hit rate on that being true is 1,000%. And I hate myself for, for doing that about two or three times this episode, saying, all right, I'll be short and then. 90 seconds goes by and I'm just completely <laughs> <sighs> listen. I, I love it. I could talk Michigan state. I could talk sports in general, just 24 hours straight with no, with no interruption. I, I love oh, I know. it. We, we had a substitute better. teacher uh, back in, in middle school. We're going way off on a tangent now uh, back in middle school. If, if you got caught talking during class, your punishment was either like five, five minute after class detention or, she would draw a circle on the whiteboard, and if you talk to that circle for five straight minutes, your name would be taken off, like, the, the bad lister or whatever like this. That's hard to monologue just for five minutes off the rip like that, but but MSU Sports, I could give any substitute teacher a run for its money, man, so. <laughs> I would tell you, we, we would talk that, um, we, we yeah, we would talk that, that circle on the whiteboard. There'd be so much just, like, perspiration and everything going on that <laughs> would just disappear. <laughs> Blood on the whiteboard Fellow eventually, just because I'm just oh. screaming myself hoarse and yeah, it's just, <laughs> oh well, chief. This what this I mean against all odds. I, I know it wasn't like up 24 seven here, but like uh, just an honor and a privilege to chat with you, man. I, I always love having you on. Always love having you. Uh, just walking around the MSU community. So really do appreciate everything you do, man. And thanks a lot for letting me chew up a lot of your Sunday night. And folks, th- thanks thanks a lot for for dealing with another episode of just mopiness. <laughs> like my God, it has to. It just has to get better. It has to get better again. A great season by all accounts for hockey. Two banners, my God! But it's just like the one team <laughs> would be a kick in the genitals to lose to. Sure enough, it happened. Thanks, North Dakota, for blowing your two-one lead, you idiots. But nevertheless, here we are. It's gotta Most get better. State in the union. God, I'm fine going back down to 49 states. Just give Canada, North Dakota, <laughs> useless useless plot of land up there i can't imagine there's a lot of north dakota and locked on spartans listeners if there are i deeply apologize for this. i don't i don't this is your fault you, you caused yeah. this just like ohio state caused what happened in january 
But no, Sheehan, I, I truly appreciate you having me on. It's listen, obviously th- things are tough right now, but um, <laughs> eventually whenever we do get back to that mountaintop, we're, we're going to look yeah. back and listen to these episodes and yeah. reread yeah. Our, our DMs and text yeah. messages and yes. everything. Yes. And it's going to be so worth it. Yes. And um, I, I don't think it's truly yes. that far off. And obviously it's cool. not going to happen tomorrow, but I think better days are on the horizon. We got spring football coming up. We got the, oh, um, yeah, we got open practice coming up on April 20th might be an appropriate day for that. So no, I'm, here, here. I'm, I'm fired up and let's go. Let's get this thing done. Like this, this is the bottom. What, what day is today? March 31st. Yep. That's the one. Listen, it starts tomorrow. Let's go. Let's go till then. We'll be back tomorrow guys. Love you all. Go green.